died, and uh, so he, uh, he he wanted to, to get rid of the business. He couldn't handle being like his daddy could. So he had one of his sons, so they sold the business. And I had a liquor store, but I knew I couldn't make enough money out of it to live on, so I started worrying about trying to learn how to make some hot tamales. And uh, a friend of mine uh, knew how to make them long years ago, but he forgot the seasoning to put the seeding in for you know for the for the for the seeding for the for the hot tamales. So I kept throwing hot tamales out the back door. I'd try to make some, and I'd uh, I, and it wouldn't taste good, so I'd throw them out. I'd make some more. And the man upstairs one gave me my ideas where I got 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 on to making hot tamales. He gave me some ideas here and there as we went along. And first thing you know, a black man from uh, Metcalf, Mississippi. Every Saturday he used to make hot tamales during the week, and on Saturday he would bring them to Greenville and sit there and sell his hot tamales. And he would never leave until he sold all of his hot tamales. So this man told me, he said, John, you got a hot tamale that tastes just like his hot tamale. And he said, if I was you, I wouldn't do nothing else to him. I'd leave them just like they are. So that's what I did. I left them like they are. But every time I make them, it's, it's, uh, I try to improve it. But I, I guess I can't go no further than I am now. But anyway, that's what I do. And so, I always used to tell folks, making corn or, or, or hot tomatoes is like making corn whiskey. Uh, you never get the same thing out twice. Make sure it's what you do. It won't never come out the same twice. But anyway, I kept it like it is, and that's what I make them today. I've been making hot tamales now about, about about 20 years. But about the first five, I had to throw a lot of them out because I kept trying to make them better. It was out of necessity. I didn't have any way. At my age, I was 59 years old. At my age, I couldn't find a job. I didn't try to look for one because I had a liquor store. And then, of course, after I got hit in the head, I had to get out of the whiskey business. It was about six months before I could do anything. After I got, had Dr. Fothingham operated on my, on my head for me, and he told me, he said, I'm going to have to operate on your head, and I don't know whether you can come out of this alive or not. He said, but if you do come out of it alive, it'll be through God's help that the reason that you live through it. He said, I can't guarantee you nothing. And but I did. I come out of it alive, and uh, after I got to where I could uh, go back to making hot models when I, I I was making them then. That's when I bought that van. Uh, but of course I had bought the van before then. But that's when I went back to selling my hot models out of my van. But I still got one back out there. Uh, had had a hot models written on the side of Maria's famous hot models. You know, I was making them in the house, and and the uh, the health inspector came over. He, about about three years, uh, he came over inspecting, and all of a sudden he told me, he said, "I'm going to stop everybody from making hot tamales in their house. Uh, they're going to either have to build a house, or build a place, or either rent a place. You can't make them at your house no more." So it cost me almost twenty thousand dollars to build that place out there. I got permission from the city to build it back there, and uh, permission from the city to sell, to to make my hot models back there. And uh, so, but the man told me a fib about it. There's still people still making hot models in their house right now, and I know they are. But I had already built it, so I said, well, I got it. Yeah, I might as well continue to make them.